Good morning. It's the 15th of October today and welcome to the Daily Post Thoughts and Scriptures and Ideas. Psalm 110 and verse 4. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. If you're reading the Bible in a year today, we need to move on through the book of Isaiah, chapters 45 and 46, and 1 Thessalonians, chapter 3. Thoughts of the day. God is a strong tower, and they that seek shelter in him shall find peace even in the storms of life. A burden of love is like carrying a basket of flowers. Its fragrance lifts the spirits of the bearer and all those upon whom it falls. In Galatians 6 and verse 2, Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfil the law of Christ. Our plans miscarry often because they have no aim. When a man does not know what harbour he is making for, no wind is the right wind. Motivational thought for the day. If you want to be respected, you must respect yourself. On this day, in 1581, commissioned by Catherine de Medici, the first ballet, the Ballet Comique de la Reine, was staged in Paris. On this day in 1783, the world's first manned balloon flight took place. In 1866, the Great Fire of Quebec destroyed 2,500 houses on this day. 1987, the Great Storm of 1987 hit France and England. And in 2020, on this day, the Thai government issued an emergency decree banning public gatherings amid increasing pro-democracy protests and criticism of the king. The personal story of the day, free from the fears of our own judgment. A wise man once wrote, when love comes, fear goes. I know so many Christians who are tormented by feelings of self-doubt, worthlessness and sinfulness. They think they must do something to make God love them more. Yet the Apostle John said that, quote, As Jesus, so are we in this world. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 17. In other words, we share the same confidence that Jesus has in knowing that the Father loves us with perfect love. Because Jesus accomplished our redemption on the cross, all judgment for sin is behind him and us, and the sin question is forever settled. We now face no condemnation as we walk in the Spirit. This removes fear, for as John wrote, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, in verse 18. The fear of which John wrote is the fear of judgment. But we have nothing to fear, for there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Jesus Christ, as we're assured by the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 8 and verse 1. Fear is driving out by God's perfect love. We're forgiven for all our sins, held fast by God's love and destined to enjoy eternal fellowship with him, not because of anything we've done, but because he has done everything for us. As John tells us again in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 10, In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us, and that is perfect love. By using the power of the Spirit, 
and living in the light of this wonderful gospel, we are all free to receive all of God's blessings, which frees us even more to serve his people with confidence rather than with fear. Praise the Lord. The devotional thoughts of the day, the first, freeing the Gentiles from the law, a logical conclusion. The scripture from Galatians chapter 4 and verse 9 with references from Galatians 4 verses 8 to 11. But now, after he have known God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements? One of the great concerns in the criminal justice system is the number of re-offences, the rate at which prisoners who have been released from prison commit another crime and end up back in jail. Many factors influence the likelihood of a repeat offence, but a common reason seems to be that many former prisoners find it difficult to function outside the order and structure of prison. Faced with making choices of their own, they end up committing crimes that will lead them back behind bars. As we think back to the beginning of the Galatian letter, we recall that Paul contends that wise living in light of the gospel message means discerning that the Gentiles do not need to submit to the law. The very practices that separated and distinguished them from the Jewish nation. In order to be full participants as Christians, having explained and elaborated on the ways in which the logic of the gospel message leads to this conclusion, Paul now applies this argument to the debate going on in the Galatian churches, whether adopting the specific practices of the law is the same as returning to the position of the child under the guardian. Such a move makes one no better than a slave, subject again to the authority of the supervisor, that is the law. More importantly, acceptance of the law puts Gentile converts back in the position of being distanced from God through lack of spiritual opportunities. In Christ, they know God, or even better, are known by God because they are filled with the same power that created all life. Prior to the coming of Jesus and of faith, they were estranged from God, subject to the evil powers and principalities of the world, as we read in chapter 3 and verse 8. Only the Jews had the right to call God Father. Now that Jesus has paid the sacrifice for all men, those who were distanced from God, who had no way of dealing with their sin, have been brought near to him. The Gentiles now know and are known by God. Praise the Lord for that mighty gift and uh, wonderful words. Truth in the Word. Scripture from John 17 and verse 17. Thy word is truth. It doesn't matter what decision we make in life. The word of God is still truth. It needs no defence in that regard. God said his word was truth, therefore it is truth. We may be financially destitute, but God says, My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19. We may have what we think is a bad disease or even a fatal disease, but the word says they shall lay hands on the sick. Mark chapter 16. His word also says, My brethren, I wish above all things that thou prosperous, even as thy soul prospereth. Third John chapter 2. Uh, third John chapter 2. We can profess life or death with the tongue, but God has come to give us life and give it more abundantly. He didn't bring us troubles and trials. We cause our own troubles and trials through our disobedience or bad judgment in the word or simply by being in a very corrupt world. 
we sometimes fail to use the power that dwells within us in order to battle these circumstances that come into our lives. We can say we have faith all day, but if we don't use the word that dwells within us, we will face all the possibilities of failure. Faith is built through studying and hearing and meditating upon and practicing the word. God gave us a measure of faith, but it's up to us what we do with it. Prayer and fellowship settle this spirit. When we find ourselves drifting into stress, anger, resentment, etc. over any situation, we should immediately begin to praise and worship God. The larger part of this requirement is done through serving the Lord in our fellowship, the place God gives us to be accountable with him. Get your spirit on the right track and your life will follow. Wise words. The facts of the day. The only nation whose name begins with A but doesn't end in A is Afghanistan. A fly can react to something it sees and change direction in about 30 milliseconds, so you need a big fly swipe. <laughs> the closing thought, Lord, help me to use the gifts that I've been given. Thank you for being with us this day. We do hope that you will be uplifted and edified by the thoughts and ideas and scriptures. We hope that you'll come back to see us again tomorrow. And in the meantime, may the Lord bless your day. Bye for now.